I always wanted to make a, an image which would be contained on the surface of a sphere. But I didn't have the instrument. Uh, so I used a scan pro processor to create an object, this diamond-shaped object. And by scanning the room with the mirror and with the camera, I imprinted the surrounding space on the surface of this object. I think this urge of uh, trans translating image, two-dimensional image, into an object, I think this urge is quite natural or ev evolutionary to the image, or electronic imaging. Since uh, the object does not need any pictorial justification, the object just exists. It was the most kind of interesting confrontation of a textual, tactile translation between the feel, between the touch, and then visual transformation of the texture itself. It, was psychologically an, an interesting uh, uh, feeling to see something totally different from the experiment, experience of touching. It, it seems that I would even have a message in this particular uh, body language, which I'm trying to, to express, which uh, says, uh, look at the difference between the, the touch and feel and uh, how, it, how it looks like because this texture of the, of the electronic image is much richer. It's moss-like. It's, uh, it's a very uh, dense feeling. And then, of course, the touching is the good old touching known to, to your senses. So that, uh, that was a gesture I wanted to, to express between the real-time image, because that image that you see was actually taken the same time in which I was examining the same tactile situation. So it was a paradox of seeing and, and feeling, which could uh, only be done in a way in real time, or in an instant visual feedback loop. So what's this picture? Yeah, this is a noise. Uh, it's a video noise, which is uh, slowed down and 
it's actually scanning the field from top to the bottom. It's a hand, hand advanced tape, which is done by you anyway. So this is also a pure electronic image? Yes, this is very much electronic because I think noise as a source of image or, or even sound, of course, is a primary material. It is very much the material itself. And uh, it, it's always challenging to use that particular original material and uh, build an image out of it. It looks like you have all the right to use this primitive material to build structures with. And uh, so it doesn't pretend, in fact, anything, because it, it is, it is nothing. These are kind of energies and some, some frequencies and voltages which are accidentally deposited on the videotape and they're then read as a, as a record of that particular state. But they're minimally organized. All the organization here is just taking the frame and inducing this cylindrical shape to it. Uh, now, what's interesting to me about this picture is that yeah. it comes from the greatest anarchy of, uh, of electronic image. It becomes from a noise which is sort of uh, all frequencies together. But once it is in this form, re-scanned and going through this raster, it becomes quite organized. There are very recognizable textures in there. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to find a purely redundant shape. Particularly in this case, it's, it's, it's actually frozen uh, movement because it, it's re it reads over the same uh, frame. If it would be not, not frozen, then it would be more redundant. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, yeah, reading actually uh, already structured, uh, not structured, but accidentally structured information, which happened to be as a piece of nature, which just happened to be very much organized. Like stone is internally very well organized, through crystallic or whatever the process there was. So even the energy in this case has a tendency to, to be organized by its own state of deposition in this magnetic material. And I would go even further. I think there are certain models in magnetic forces which could be read as models of image or as images. Now these uh, pictures are uh, not made through the camera. They are television frames, and uh, each of these pictures is made uh, is made out of 525 lines. That means it is the television frame we are looking at which has no information inside. It's an empty television frame. And then this empty television frame is, is put on a scan processor, which is an instrument that, that takes the television frame and uh, let us uh, reshape it by magnetic forces. We can induce various waveforms into the deflection system. And that's how we model image without any aid of the camera. Yeah, I find it interesting that to have like the light shining from a certain point, that you can direct the energy to be such that it looks like a, a light is coming 
it the density itself like it becomes whiter because the lines are closer like these are a little bit spread from here to here the li uh, lines are spread so much they are actually invisible it's like a empty space and these suddenly become compressed more and more but this is the frame this is the television frame which is til tilted and that density of course that that gives the idea that in fact light is coming to this image as if it would be an object because object always picks up directions it's always uh, identifying the space by direction of the light and provide some plasticity transition but in this case the plasticity itself is just suggested through the compression or spreading of the density of the lines again this as you see is a coherent density this is a stretched density but surprisingly it uh, it's very much convincing as an object yeah by itself so why did you uh, find it important to make a pair and make it stereoscopic at first i just made let's say single object and then i realized that i i could find in the same system a mode of making a, a, a true stereoscopic pair like in this case they suddenly both have different angular twist as if observed from a different angle providing for each eye different viewpoint that means i could add to this already constructed object a true binocular pair. You see, uh, so it is also easy in film. I mean, there were two reasons. First of all, in, for the timing in order to be able to do the uh, right and the left eye. But then also when it comes to projection, film seems to have it much easier. Because uh, how would you separate the eyes for a television screen? It, uh, it would be more difficult in a way because I cannot overlay one image over the other since it is not a projection yeah so I could only rely on the possibility of some people uh, to take these images and cross their eyes and overlay them, overlay them. usually by overlaying you see three images and then by centering or focusing on the middle one you can see this particular image binocular as three dimensional so here you can see the most easily that this is really a television screen that it is a raster it, in an image like this when when it stretches you can start even seeing the lines right it just tells you very simply that you can bend television image as if it would be piece of material that that also has uh, kind of suggested to me to think about television or electronic images as objects and i have no problem anymore to relate to television as object uh, or television frame as an object in this case, it is an empty television frame, does not have any image as we know it in television. It has only the line structures, which is to some degree coherent. But as you see, this empty frame now is being modulated by sine waveforms. And these sine waveforms say, uh, provide itself transitions, almost organic transitions to this straight frame of television.
Yeah, what's, uh, what's uh, kind of striking is that every small horizontal movement, like pan, or when the ocean comes, that suddenly it becomes becomes very much amplified in the in the cylindrical uh, shape because suddenly the frame which is distant from here to there becomes stretched all the way around so it actually it's it's twice of a length if we would we would take this point and that point and open the cylinder, we would actually have a large cinema scope. But it also, of course, distorts the same way. And also it loses tremendous amount of definition because it has to distribute the same image over much, much greater area. Actually, this is a, a rewind. Why don't you rewind yeah. at the same time so we know it's, it yeah. is the rewind? Uh, uh, yeah, rewind it. Huh? Aha. Uh -huh. But that's too late. I see. Okay, you want me to click off? Because now I want to find the next one. Yeah, that's too late. Okay. You're going to go to the left and it's too late. But, uh... No, that's, that's enough. I have to wait for the movement. Now it became very hot. Yeah. Now this is again the same image. Yeah, this is uh, exactly the same image with the same uh, animals.
This, this also is a, this actually is a, is a video feedback which is fed off or triggered off the noise. So again, the, the original material is the noise itself, but in this case the noise uh, is, is optically, since it's a rescan, it's optic, optically amplified, it's zoomed in, zoomed on, and slightly disfocused, so that how you see those uh, softer transitions. But the, the image itself is... It's again electronic. It's an uh, electronic material. Yeah.